We want to welcome in retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel and CEO of the Near East Center for Strategic Engagement, Sargas Sangari. Thank you for joining us today, Colonel. It's good to be here. I want to get your reaction first to um, this report that John just talked about, about these mercenaries who were put in. Obviously, we've been seeing Zelensky really, his coverage on display for the entire world. But today, day six, Colonel, a TV tower is taken out. Russians are explicitly telling people in Kyiv, get out. How much longer um, can he remain safe if he stays in the capital? You know, who knows? Uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, we put him in this position. And I always blame uh, the advisors that advise Zelensky on some of the moves he made politically, uh, especially when it came to uh, how uh, he was trying to ensure that uh, Ukraine was going to be part of the European Union. You know, today he spoke in front of the European Parliament and they all stood up and clapped for him. If I was Zelensky, I would have told him at that time, thank you for your uh, applause, but if you could please sit down for a moment. And I would have told him, you know, I came to you a week and a half ago, like a beggar on my knees. I've mm -hmm. sent my foreign minister to the United States. I cried and pleaded for you, and I said, please help me to stop this from happening. And you did nothing. And today you stand up and clap for me when my nation is being burned from one end to another, and I might even lose my life because of it. When my family members in Ukraine have become refugees, nobody knows if they're ever going to be able to see each other again. So take your applause and please do me a favor, shell them because they're worth nothing right now. He what? is needing help, and right now EU needs, needs to step up and help him since they put him in this position. Right. It's an interesting point that you make, though. He really has, uh, you're right, a week ago there was a sense of begging, if you will. Um, but now things have changed, and it seems that, you know, he's going to stay till the end. I do want to get your thoughts on the position that we are in, though, Lieutenant um, Colonel. We have heard the word nuclear from Putin. We have seen Putin being reckless. There are attacks now near kindergartens today. Um, there's no, there's really no way of knowing what could be next. Is there a way, is there a path to de-escalate this? And how do you think the Biden administration is doing with its handling to respond? Well, unfortunately, I think it's too late. Right now, the Biden administration, like the European Union, is just reactive. Putin has moved forces into Ukraine. Ukraine is being destroyed. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers are dying or Ukrainian families are refugees. Um, there's not one city in Russia that I know of that has been bombed. Uh, not one Russian civilian in Russia has lost their life. Are they going to go through pain because of the economic sanctions? Of course. But uh, keep one thing in the understanding of the Russian doctrine. The more destabilized various different countries around them are, the safer Russia is from their perspective. So he is going to destroy whatever infrastructure is in Ukraine. It depends on whether or not Zelensky survives or doesn't. Eventually, there's going to be an understanding of how to fix Ukraine. And unfortunately, I think what Ukraine had at its, its disposal, which was its natural resources, or everybody is going to go after. Europeans are going to say, you need to pay us back, Zelensky, for everything we gave you to get to this point, especially since they put pressure on him to sign that European Union uh, requirement yesterday after he was doing negotiations with the Russians. The Russians are going to get what they need from Europe in the long run, with Putin being there or not. And also the Chinese are going to try to maneuver themselves because they get an economic juggernaut. So this is a fight, unfortunately, regardless of uh, Zelensky survives or not, as to how all the spoils are going to be divided in the future to pay for the rebuilds. You use the word destroy. He will destroy the Ukraine. Uh, we know that these sanctions, albeit late, uh, some of them are now being felt in Russia, where we do see oligarchs complaining, saying uh, they don't want their assets frozen. But the people of Russia, the innocent people who really aren't are under a propaganda cloud, there, running to the bank, trying to get their money out. Do you think, Colonel, from your experience, um, that Putin is willing to basically destroy this country, even though he would have the cost to have to rebuild it? If he even if he accesses portions of it, you think he just does not care at this point? I think he's committed. I, we knew that uh, if Putin went in, he knew he was going to lose. If he didn't go in, he was going to lose. So he made the calculation, I might as well go in and see how it turns out. And now he's still testing the West to see what the reaction is going to be. As much as Putin overreached maybe of his military force structure, I would really be uh, cautious if I was advising the West. Do not overreach thinking that you could conduct a uh, change inside of Russia. Putin had only maybe, what, 10 more years left? He's 70 years old now. 
uh, and he wasn't going to be there that long. Unfortunately, I think what is happening is the fact that the news is tightening around Ukraine, and we cannot support a no-fly zone because that's a direct declaration to war. And I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to support Zelensky surviving. I hope he does. Unfortunately, there's nobody can guarantee that. Uh, of course not. About a minute left here. There was that attack on the TV tower, which obviously is something that has a uh, loss of life there. But is that also significant um, on the battlefield trying to take out communication? Although we have the Internet still up, not a cyber attack. Um, was there a strong message sent just a few hours ago with that attack on the Kiev tower? I don't know. I mean, you have to kind of look into it. Uh, when we went into Iraq, we destroyed pretty much the entire infrastructure of Iraq. And then we had to send the PRC teams to be able to help rebuild it. Uh, so if it was a tactical requirement, maybe that's why they hit it. But unfortunately, there's going to be more death and destruction in Ukraine. And uh, it's not good for the people of Ukraine. No, of course not. Our prayers are with them. And Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, uh, we appreciate Sargas Sangari. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you.